All right, what's going on everyone? Welcome back to the workshop. What I have for you today is this. This is the Neo 360, and it's a little circuit board that I've been working on with a few friends of mine. And what it essentially does is something that I've not really seen done before. And what that is, is it allows you to wire these five NeoPixels in series with a motor. Now you're probably thinking, why the hell is that useful? You could just wire up a motor to like the three volt regulator pin on a profi board, right? But what about in a blade plug? That's kind of the idea here. In a blade plug, the only things you have to work with are the positive, the negative, and the data for the NeoPixels. So my thought was, if I can somehow harness the power of the NeoPixel data, read it somehow, and convert it to a raw motor voltage, then I could make some pretty interesting blade plugs. You know, have the five LEDs around the edge here. The hole in the middle of the Neo 360 is intended for the motor, one of those sort of 47 RPM, uh, six millimeter planetary motors. You can have that going through the middle here. And then you've got some really, really cool looking outcomes. Now I have no shame in admitting that I've seen motorized blade plugs done before, mostly by Geek Garage on Instagram. Some of the stuff that they've posted has been absolutely amazing and has totally been the inspiration for this project and I won't even bother denying that because it's absolutely true. But the one thing I always noticed with a lot of his videos was that with the blade plugs that he was making, none of them ever seemed to turn off. They were always either constantly spinning or you could see the saber turn on and it was already spinning beforehand. This board, however, it has a little chip that can interpret the NeoPixel data and the way that the motor works is it interprets the red data of the first NeoPixel in this chain. So imagine this board as a, uh, a little strip of six NeoPixels, except the first one is actually the motor. So in, say, ProfiOS, for example, if you send a full red signal just to the first LED, like if you sub-blade it, like you can do in ProfiOS, then the motor will be spinning at full speed. And now you can, in the software, have it fade out, and that will, in turn, fade the motor speed, and it'll fade it to off, just like any other kind of NeoPixel effect. Now, I've made a very specific style for this, which I'll put up on the screen here, and I'll also leave in the description if you want to sort of copy-paste this into your own workflows. I don't know if this is something that you can do with CFX. If there's a way to kind of sub-blade and have, you know, one style reacting differently to some other NeoPixels that are also in series, then you can kind of do it. But I don't know too much about CFX. I kind of designed this with ProfiBoard in mind a little bit, knowing that you can sub-blade one of the pixels and then I'm thinking use an entirely different style just to run the motor. So it's entirely separate from the five pixels on the front. Or you can just have them do the same thing. There's kind of no big deal there. Now, if you really dig deep into ProfiOS, you can even think about IDing the blade plug so that you can have uh, the Profi board know when this little board is inserted and it knows to change the first NeoPixel into a motor rather than uh, a actual colored style like all of the other effects. But if you don't choose to ID it, then worst case scenario, the first pixel will look a bit strange. So say you you do sort of, uh, you subblade the first pixel so that the motor responds differently. If you then take the plug out and then swap it for a blade, the first pixel on that blade will probably look a little bit weird. Um, but you know, if that's kind of buried deep in the saber, like there's kind of nothing really to worry about there. So that's kind of my thought process is, uh, you know, why it's the first LED in the chain. But yeah, that's kind of how this works. So it's pretty much as simple as you take the three connections from your uh, blade plug, uh, your blade side PCB, sorry, and you connect them to the ground, the data and the VCC pin. So the VCC is positive, ground is negative and D is data. And then it's just as simple as it goes around the board and it does the adapting and then you have a motor negative and motor plus uh, symbol uh, solder pad right there. If you find that it's sort of rotating the wrong way, like if you've got a crystal chamber going on and you kind of want to match the rotation and it's not the same, then you can just flip the two over. The, the positive and negative doesn't really matter for a uh, brushed motor that we're using. So it's kind of as simple as that. You've got the five solder pads, the three on the outside go to the blade side PCB, like a stock one or a KR Sabres one or anyone else that makes them. And then the two motor pins just go to the motor. And then the motor kind of sits going through this board. Um, 
with a little sort of 3D printed or machined piece on the end of the blade plug. But it makes it very, very simple to throw it all together. You know, you just have to subblade the first LED so that the motor can respond correctly. And then you've got five LEDs on top of that. The first version, so this one, I hand assembled myself, so it's not gonna look perfect, but it does get the job done, so I can at least show you how this works. Um, but also the final version that I'll be offering to Sabre stores will have 3.5 millimeter LEDs rather than these 20 millimeter, sorry, not 20, two millimeter LEDs. Um, so the final version will be a little bit brighter than what I'm showing here. So it's basically the same thing. It's just that the NeoPixels are changing in size. So let's have a look at this in context so you can actually get an idea of what it's all about. And I'll, I'll stop explaining it now and actually show you what it can do. All right, so I've got a quick example of a Neo360 blade plug here. And the board sits about right here. And the reason it sits so high up from the blade side connector PCB, because the silver part of the planetary motor needs to kind of have its own space because that's the part of the motor that causes the most vibration. The gearbox is a much safer, I say safer, but you, you know what I mean. It's a much better place for the Neo360 board to kind of sit up against because that kind of reduces vibration a fair bit. Now, this blade plug was kind of thrown together and it's using a pretty old motor and an older version of the board that sits a little bit lower. So the vibration in this one isn't great, <laughs> so you'll probably hear it in a minute, but uh, it's just a quick example of what the actual board can do rather than uh, the whole thing as a, as a sort of kit, I guess. So what we've got here is we've got the blade side PCB connector. The three wires from this come off of this board and connect to the connections on the left of the Neo360 board, so to the grounds, the data, and the VCC pin. And then two wires come off the motor negative and motor positive pin and connect directly to the motor. That motor then goes directly down through the middle of the board into this custom 3D printed blade plug that also holds the gearbox of the motor in place and just has a little sort of decorative piece on the end here. It's just kind of the closest thing I could find that would fit over a motor. So just as an example, let's see how this works in practice. So we've got here the Ogdo Killer. Uh, just with the end exposed like this. So we turn it on and we have the normal sort of NeoPixel connector behavior right there. So no extra wires being connected to this or anything, just the positive, sorry, positive, negative and data pins off of the connector side PCB. We plug this in here and I'm just gonna hold it down because I can't be bothered to do the, uh, the retention screw. And like I said, the vibration is a little loud at the moment but just turning this on now. We'll see, we'll see that it's really loud, uh, but we do have a rotating blade plug, which we can turn on and off using the normal saber switch. And you can kind of hear, it's actually kind of helpful that it's a little bit louder right now because you can hear that the motor fades out when I turn it off. So there you go, that's kind of, uh, how that works in context. I'll have a look at this in another style where I kind of have a fade on as well because that's a little bit easier to notice. So for this Vader style, I've got it so that it gradually slowly turns on. And you can see that's exactly what that does. And you can see the five NeoPixels from the, uh, from the Neo 360 board just shining through there and you press the button on the Sabre and it turns off just as you expect it to. And then you can just take the blade plug out and go back to using the Sabre as normal. I've got it matched up to the rotation of my crystal chamber as well. So this does exactly the same thing as the Neo360 did. So yeah, that's just a quick look at how this works in context. Um, I'm hopefully planning to offer this board out to Sabre stores uh, around the world pretty soon. So if you're interested, leave a comment down below and I look forward to seeing what you guys think of this little board. So yeah, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys soon.